Okay, we're two minutes to countdown, guys. Roseanne, please shoot Dan Schaefer an email and remind him that we're starting now. And send him the link, Dan, if you wouldn't mind. There was still some confusion uh, over the 8 o'clock or 9 o'clock. Well, the 9 o'clock. Okay, I'm about to start right now. It's 9.59, guys. I'm going to record. I'm recording now. And uh, stay tuned in uh, T minus one minute. What's your plan for tomorrow? Are you a lady? Are we the father? Are you a lady? Are you a power? It's our time. Take back the power. What's your plan? What are you gonna do when they show up in black suit? New street, not meant to be. Well, all right. Welcome to the truth bomb riff motherload that's going to lead us into a revolution of humanity's soul and purpose that will hopefully usher in the clean new deal to the world at a time when we are completely tripping through the most polluted, <clears throat> diabolical, griftopia circus on overload that I think any of us have ever encountered in the entirety of our lives. It exceeds fiction. It exceeds the, um, you know, uh, the sort of the sort of imagination of what those of us who have been around for some time have experienced throughout our lives, because we've seen this in in millions of movies or television shows or any sort of depiction uh, through any sort of communication. But yet it's getting worse by the day. And my name is Patrick Lovell, and I'm the producer of a piece of um, work that I think is the blueprint that can really revolutionize, quite frankly, the United States first, and then hold ultimately the world. Now, you know, from where I'm sitting, you know, I uh, don't consider myself an autocratic, uh, you know, leader. I don't consider myself the Messiah, <clears throat> but ironically, there is a lot of parallels to the nature of um, my story and those stories that we've all seen and come become accustomed to but at the same time because of the nature of media all of us are exposed to overload of misinformation information everybody talking at the same time and the only ones that can win quite frankly in this in this insanely crazy uh, landscape are the people that have the most resources the people that can hire the best and brightest people who are the engineers of algorithms um, and understand intelligence. And typically these are the types of things that come from governments, AKA the KGB or the CIA, but there's so much more to it in um, the world of billionaires, quite frankly. And now what I say as kind of the overview and the umbrella of what it is that I've discovered on my journey is that the billionaires spend billions to loot trillions and therefore have built a, let's say a parameter of um, something that would would potentially match what governments could do because they own the government because the financial system is the lifeblood of what, how everything works in the mechanics of the united states which is the country that is the indispensable nation at the moment which will be thrown in the gutter soon enough if we're not careful uh and we're at that crossroads but there's a lot that goes into this which is geopolitics 
you know, economic designs, uh, history, but more importantly, the knowledge of how things work. And when you understand the blueprint for what um, has become our system, only then can you truly understand what's at stake and what we have to do to reinvent the wheel. And to use a, uh, uh, an analogy to Game of Thrones, my purpose is to break the wheel. What, whether you, you like Daenerys Targaryen or not, that's my purpose and that's what I want to do. But in my journey and what I've done, I've been so fortunate to find other people that recognize the scenario for what it is at this moment. And we have come together under one umbrella to drive forward a new revolutionary political tidal wave populist crusade to purge corruption and the fascism of fuels that we deem the clean new deal. So with that introduction, I want to introduce my colleagues and my co-hosts and folks that are in on this mission. And I want them to express their come froms, what's important um, in terms of their world, their, 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 their story, which got them to this moment, and then ultimately why they're on board with the Clean New Deal and what their agenda is, their priorities in moving this effort forward. And, and on that note, I want to start off with someone I've come uh, to really appreciate and respect, and I find that his um, insight is really quite extraordinary. And on that note, out of Portland, Oregon, straight out of the Bronx in New York on that 3,400-mile journey, I guess, and so much more in between, I'd like to introduce you to my friend and colleague, Kevin Howard. Kevin, tell us what you're thinking. Well, thank you, Patrick. I tell you, I'm so excited to be here and address our audience today about the Clean New Deal. Yeah, my name is Kevin Howard. And uh, yes, as you mentioned, Patrick, I was born and raised in the Bronx. Uh, you know, I was raised by a single parent, naturalized American citizen who lived the first 14 years of her life in Cologne, Panama. And uh, my mom raised me to appreciate the rare opportunity that I was provided by being born an American. And so at 18, I was anxious to serve my country. And I, you know, I joined the US Army and I served four years active duty as a first generation M1 in a first generation M1 tanking unit as a member of NATO at the height of the Cold War. After my service, I attended college in Texas, graduate school in Connecticut, then went on to build a successful career as a bus business banker, helping young entrepreneurs find their American dreams until I lost everything due to the financial crash that led to the Great Recession. Since the Great Recession, it took me years, but I finally started to rebuild my career. And today I am a consultant specializing in climate risk management and sustainability advisory services. When I consider what is important to me in today's America, I see a country and society severely degraded by extreme wealth and income inequality and deeply divided by vitriolic disputes. None of these circumstances have occurred by accident. We find ourselves in an America few of us recognize because the billionaire class who owns our government and dominates our economy have made it so by any means necessary. Yet, the American people are awakening. Since the reopening of our economy after the COVID-19 pandemic, millions of Americans across our country have quit shitty jobs for better opportunities. And where they did not quit, they have chosen to organize, to unionize, and to strike for better pay and benefits. The most famous recent strike is the successful stand-up strike orchestrated by the United Auto Workers against the big three automakers. As we enter the new year and the presidential election season in 2024, this is our moment to reclaim, to reclaim sovereignty for the American people by electing an independent president who will unite the country behind the Clean New Deal. I strongly support the Clean New Deal because it meets the dual challenges of severe wealth and income inequality, 
it addresses the climate crisis, and most importantly, it will hold accountable the wealthy elites who used fraud and campaign finance bribery to steal trillions of dollars from the American people. So I ask everyone who's listening today to join us in this mission to elect an independent president who will use the mandate from our new governing coalition to enact the Clean New Deal. Thank you. Kevin, that was absolutely brilliant. I think you hit all the pressing points there, and I, I concur with all of them. And what I loved about what you said about we have to elect an independent president, and we'll get to be able to discuss this more downstream, but what I'm hearing from you is that there is nothing that either party can adjust that um, would make you get into a, a scenario that we all have been for at least the last two decades, which is what we always call the lesser of two evils approach. You're saying that because of the knowledge that we have, because of the detail we have, that we have to foment the energy built around the facts and the evidence that we've coalesced around the clean, or excuse me, everything that we know from the greatest corruption that we, the world's ever seen to be able to build the clean new deal to attract potential candidates to us. I, I love that, Kevin. And I, and I can't wait to, to have you further that forward considering the mess that we're in, but thank you for those beautiful opening sentiments. Um, I'm going to turn the, um, turn the attention now to my colleague, Roseanne Raviola Mille, the powerhouse mighty mouse from Las Vegas, Nevada via Chicago, Illinois to lay on us her truth bomb. Thank you, Patrick. And thank you, Kevin. That was some great stuff. And every time I, the group gets together, I'm always so happy to get just different thoughts, different ideas. Um, and, and the word really isn't different. Okay, the word shouldn't be different. It's just opening our minds to another perspective, a perspective of light, not evil, not darkness. Um, the group here, um, I'm the I'm the senior member, and I've been around a little bit longer than folks here and I've always been on this journey and the journey is not only do you put one foot in front of the other but you understand that and I call them the big boys you understand how the big boys no matter if we're talking about parties uh, the Democrats, the Republicans, the whatever. They're the two main ones, of course. They simply are two sides of the same coin, different sides. That's it. They will do anything to hold on to that. In the 60s, we understood you don't trust these people. Why don't you trust them? Because they're selling you a bill of goods, all right? So we went out in the millions all the time, all the time. We saw the corruption and we saw the corruption because we were, we were um, schooled, educated, in, in kind of strict authoritarian ways. Like I went to Catholic school my whole life, okay? Here's the rule, this is it. You don't do it, you're going to hell, okay? And I remember my mother telling me one time, I was maybe six years old. I says, Ma, if I do this, am I going to hell? She says, no, honey, you're not going to hell. You're a good person. I, I mean, I remember telling her that I can see it, right? So I distrusted uh, the authorities, but I knew what I was distrusting. I knew it, okay? 
And I'm looking and looking and looking over the years. And what do I find? Three years ago, I find what you see behind me. I see a blueprint. I see the answers. I see good, honest people of courage. It's not only the integrity part. You can say, yeah, so-and-so is a good guy. This candidate is a good guy. But what? where is their courage? Are they going to speak up to the American people and say, hey, get your integrity and courage in gear. Understand you are connected to your community, your county, your state, your country, ultimately the world, and run for an office. But as an independent candidate, do we have conventions of independence? Do we have nonpartisan conventions where we have to spend millions of dollars? No. Get your integrity and courage in gear because we can have a clean new deal that supports people before profits. Wall Street's business model is what? It's fraud. Where did Bernie take us? I loved him. I hugged the man. Where did he take us? Okay. You can't trust the parties to do the people's bidding. We have to join together to show those who are running, and you can have ranked choice voting everywhere, they need integrity and courage and must work for us. And the, people, the, have people. To, and the people have to demand accountability. And it, it, it's so interesting right. you mention all of that, Roseanne, because when I was early in my journey, after I had gone to 28 Occupy Walk, Wall Street encampments around the country, landing in Zuccotti Park the day that NYPD blew it up, I'll never forget that. As long as I lived, as Eric and I were running from the NYPD into, it was just like straight out of the 60s, quite frankly. And um, But there was talk after that, before I even got into the, the details of the kind, <clears throat> that we were going to have this kind of constitutional convention this we the people constitutional convention on july 4th in you know i think it was 2012 and then it was 2014 and there were all these discussions about things like this happening to bring everybody out of the fray of the umbrella of the system so that that we could create kind of like this new jungle if you will you know and plant the seeds of this new energy that was going to come up and it never happened why because of organization because organization is tough and that's why these guys uh you know on the other side of this the villains of deception have a shit ton of money and that's what it's all about in the end that's the lifeblood of organizing and people get on board and they give up because we all have to that was the you know the, the focus of my truth bomb yesterday but on that note i'm going to turn the tables now to a gentleman that you know we discovered through social media and boy am i happy we did the powerhouse out of missouri a gentleman who um i think was when i was imagining the opportunity actually both of these gentlemen on here uh, in terms of the types of people that I've you know, come across my whole life and professionals and dynamic people who think through things, who understand things that were active their whole lives and everything else, you know, I knew that they were out there and that if we could somehow connect that, wow, we could actually build this thing that would actually become organized if we could convince them that we actually had the goods of the facts and the evidence that actually the entire country needs to come to grips with because the entire system of media and government has prevented us from all knowing the truth. So on that note, I want to turn our attention to Mr. Dan Schaefer. And Dan, if you could just run with it and give us some opening perspective and comments about how you're seeing things as we try to move forward and, and why you do support the, new, the Clean New Deal. Well, thanks, Patrick. Uh, great introduction, by the way. It probably does more than justice for me, but um, I, I have to say that I've kept my head pretty low my whole life uh, regarding politics. I was always interested in politics. I'd always try to catch, you know, meet the press on Sundays and things like that. Uh, you know, I, I grew up in the Midwest. I grew up in St. Louis, North St. Louis County, and um, got my engineering degree in Missouri here, and then um, 
shortly afterwards, uh, left and went to California, lived in Los Angeles for, it was going to be two years, but it ended up being like 30 years, <laughs> you know, raised a family out there. Um, then it, then it, yeah, I lost my job out there and then it got, you know, kind of in, involved in sort of the unemployment thing. But, you know, it, it uh, I moved back to St. Louis here about 2014-ish for another job here, which I was subsequently laid off last last uh, April. Um, but it, I was educated as an engineer, and I like to put things together. I like to design things. I designed a lot of circuit boards, did a lot of things, but I also got involved in sales. So I traveled worldwide, helping our sales team, doing technical sales, uh, also training and uh, ended up in marketing. And then when I came back, back to St. Louis here, I just ended up getting back into programming again, so which is my first love. That's sort of the, the circle of my life there. But, you know, politics, politics is always a passing um, interest of mine, passing interest. Uh, but as, as the years went on, and especially as you know, I saw you know, Trump rising to prominence, I began to sit up and pay more attention to what was going on. And then the year 2017 hit, which was the worst year of my life by far. Um, my son, who was, was still living out in California now, um, came down with an autoimmune disease. Actually, it, it manifested itself three different ways. And the first way we became aware of it was um, he got diabetes, type 1 diabetes, which was misdiagnosed. Uh, so he almost died, ended up in ICU. I ended up on a plane flying out there to see him. Uh, later on that year, he got something called... Um, uh, Addison's disease, which is where the immune system attacks the adrenal gland and basically shuts down your ability to produce cortisone. So um, I'm on the plane again. This time, I didn't think I was going to see him anymore. I, I was. I just remember being on the plane, just crying all the way out to California, trying to trying to keep it together, you know. And uh, so, you know, bottom line is, my son is obviously he's still alive. He's he's healthy. He's uh, you wouldn't know it by looking at him, but he's got to take a fistful of pills every day. He's got to check his uh, his uh, insulin all the time. And going through this whole process, I, it had two effects on me. One was I wanted to look into what it would take to become an endocrinologist because I wanted to be a doctor. I want to I want to cure diabetes, right? I want to cure these diseases. And so I, I I dived, you know, having some technical background in science and you know physics and math and chemistry. I decided I'm going to tackle this thing, right? Well, after about six months, I got humbled because there's a lot to learn there. But I did learn a lot about, you know, how the how the immune system works, how DNA works, how uh, how proteins are built, and so on. Fascinating, fascinating trip for me. But I looked down the road and said, um, yeah, for me to actually become a research scientist and maybe cure the disease, I'd be like 90 years old by that time. You know, I don't even plan on being on Earth that, for that long. So that was uh, that was that was kind of a no go for me. But in the process of doing this whole research, I looked around and found out, hey, where is insulin being manufactured these days? Where are the prime chemicals for insulin coming from? As well as for cortisone, which is, which is again, necessary for uh, making up for your adrenal gland uh, issues. And shock, shock to find out that a large part of our supply chain runs through China. It runs through India. Now, I have nothing against China or India, but... The problem is that we're very vulnerable to our foreign relations at this point. Why did we allow a critical part of our infrastructure for which millions of people literally depend on, on their lives for to run through these other countries? Another thing I found out, too, was that um, insulin, you know, my son lives in L.A. still, the L.A. area, and um, I'm talking to him on the phone and saying, you know, insulin is pretty expensive these days. He says, yeah, an insurance company will pay for it, but yeah, okay, but still, it's pretty expensive. He says, don't worry, Dad, I can go down to Tijuana and get the same exact vials of insulin, same manufacturer and everything for one-tenth the cost. You know, if worse comes to worse, I'll, I'll go up to Canada and get it. This and I'm like, why is it so expensive in the U.S.? So I started looking into it, start peeling back the layers of the onion and realizing a couple things. One is that um, between years 2010 and 2020, the U.S., through the, through the National Institutes of Health and other organizations, funneled about $200 billion into the pharmaceutical industry to work on these advanced drugs. So that's our money going in there, plus our money going through universities that, that help out with research, plus any sort of money we write, you know, we write checks off to the American Heart Foundation or the Diabetes Foundation or whatever. So we write our, our personal money off to this. And when these companies come up with these critical 
drugs that, that for which people's lives depend upon, they get exclusive patents on it, and then they are able to sell it at, at costs which if you cannot pay, you die, period. And people have died. And I'm like, how can we allow this to happen? How can we allow these companies to have exclusive patents when we helped subsidize? And we didn't do the whole thing, obviously. You know, pharmaceutical companies, to, to their credit, they do a lot of research as well. But $200 billion isn't chump change either, right? We helped this thing along a lot. So why are our politicians not demanding that these pharmaceutical companies uh, create generic alternatives to these drugs so that we can actually have what we really want in the first place, competition, right? You go to the pharmaceutical, you go to your, your local pharmacy, you can get the real drug or you can get the generic drug for like one-tenth the price. You pull out your good RX card, you get it for a lot less too. So, so I started peeling back these layers of the onion and realizing this is corruption. I mean, this is just, this is just plain corruption. And, and in, my whole, in my whole political process of moving forward, I said it had it had two effects. I mean, one was the was the technical effect, which was to try to become an endocrinologist, which ain't going to happen. But the second effect was to get involved into in politics and figure out what's going on. So the first thing I did, I thought, well, I'll help the Democratic Party. This 2018 election, I'll go out there and door knock for the Democratic Party. I did, and I started telling people my story, and they started telling me their stories. And I find out I'm not a unique case. I could, I've talked to dozens of people in this area here. I live in the southern part of the St. Louis area. I've talked to dozens of people in the same situation, paying through the nose for drugs. And if they can't pay, they die. I've had two people tell me that if it wasn't for Obamacare, they would be dead. So, uh, so that was an a, a, a educational thing for me. The second thing I did was I joined the Alliance Party, which is another political party. It's a third party. Uh, did their podcast for them for about two years, did uh, over 100 podcasts for them. Uh, I got a little bit disillusioned because uh, I'm more action oriented. They're not as action oriented as I wanted them to be. So I started my own podcast called Democracy on the Move and still doing that podcast. Um, in all, I've done over 200 podcasts and I've talked to people all over the place. I've even talked to prisoners. I've talked to politicians. I've talked to book authors. And in the process of doing all this, I got a lot of information. The bottom line on a lot of things is corruption. I talked to Catherine Gale, and my uh, she wrote the, a book with Michael Porter called The Politics Industry, and she and Michael Porter lay it out exclusively for you exactly what's happening out there. It's not really the Democratic Party. It's not really the Republican Party per se. You talk to Lee Drutman also, who will tell you the same thing. Political parties are manifestations of of things that are put in place because of the system that's there. And what Catherine Gale told me, she says, you want to change the, you want to change things, change the system. So, so I took that to heart. And I thought, you know, then suddenly, you know, Patrick, you and I got involved. I I I think maybe, I don't know if I liked one of your comments or something like that, or we just started talking. I'm like, who's this guy? Right. Um, and I watched your documentary, The Con, and I'm like, ah, he gets it. Now you're running, you know, you're running from a, a different perspective, the financial cri crisis of 2008, but it still comes down to the same damn thing, which is corruption. We got to get rid of it, and we got to get rid of it in the sense that our lives depend on it. It isn't something trivial like, oh yeah, that guy's corrupt, or whatever you know, he can have his money, or whatever. No, he is corrupt to the point where people are dying, and this is dead serious stuff. And I think, uh, Patrick, your observation is that um, this man a manifestation of corruption is moving into areas like fascism at this point. Now it's getting dangerous. This is not just, you know, th this is actually a third rail. That, you know, if we touch this thing, we're going to die. You know, so um, it's gotten so bad right now. It's spinning out of control. And I used to call, I used to distinguish between the Republican Party and MAGA. I don't anymore. Any any decent Republican, very few of them are left in politics. Any decent Republican has left. And all you got to do is look at people like Mitt Romney or something like that. I don't consider him, I don't agree with the guy very much, but I would still consider him a, a fairly decent politician. He's out. Uh, Liz Cheney, she's out. I also don't agree with her about everything across the board. I definitely don't agree with her old man who started the war in Iraq. But um, 
but you know she's she's decent in the sense that she's true to the to the conservative principles of, of the original Republican Party. They're out. So what are we left with? As a corrupt organization, and not I'm not in love with the DNC either, but um, we got to do something. You know, something's got to happen. I, I I agree with Kevin about uh, having a independent president. I like that, but if you read Teresa Amato's book, uh, Grand Illusion, she was the uh, campaign manager for Ralph Nader uh, for 2000 and 2004 uh, for his presidential run. I also talked to Ralph Nader, by the way. Um, she was I'll tell you a horror story about what it's like to become a qualified independent candidate in 50 states. Um, it's tough. It's tough. If I could talk my wife into it, I would be a I would be a independent candidate for a state house. But uh, that's a different story. Anyways, um, that's kind of like my background, where I'm coming from, and um, that's my story, and I'm sticking to it. Well, it's a it's a fantastic story indeed, and it just amplifies where I've been coming from this whole time is that the core of everything is the tumor of corruption, and it is. And when you go on our journey, and it was absolutely mind boggling, boggling, Dan, when you created that AI image that was part and parcel to the WSOP article that gave this incredible maze with the you know the the the, the clouds, dark clouds, and the gargoyles, and it shows the Supreme Court in the background which you know, in my case, it's really the Federal Reserve. But the bottom line is that it just in, in one small encapsulation, you know, was able to trigger, you know, what we all connect with in terms of we all know there's a story, there's a journey, there's there's something. And we're all in the midst of this and everybody's trying to put their fingers on this. But at the same time, what we're battling, because everybody has a voice, everybody can um, you know, click on and say what they have to say. And, and they usually everybody has an agenda, myself included, right? I want to say what I want to say. I want people to hear what I have to say. I want to get my voice above the noise and everybody's doing that. But the real, the reality is who's got the big resources to put into the smart guys that can get our voices over those because it's a competition right now. It's a yeah. massive competition. It's a free for all. And, you know, where I'm coming from, as you saw with our work, the con is yeah no we, it was a massive commitment and expense and you know commitment in in ways that I'll never possibly think possible again quite frankly all things considered but I'm going to turn this over to my my contact or my, my colleague my friend my partner in arms here a woman who's been with us really from the beginning and who's uh you know astounded me to no end her clarity in in, in, a, in a, a completely different space and where you're coming from dan but she's the type of person that would have the answers for people in her world that would if we're doing the corollary like you know if you wanted the answers about how the drugs were being manipulated by whom in india and what the supply chains were and who was doing what when and how and what the documents showed us and how this whole thing was working through the actual investment procedures and who the the the, the uh the politicians that were Paris Dubay out of Florida, and we've got a whole broad swath of the United States here, uh, would be that person as it relates to the housing collapse and what took place to bury literally millions of people, but particularly the most vulnerable amongst us, seniors and, and women, particularly women of minorities, but that when you understand the entire story, particularly that we revealed to you in the con, which is unfortunately one half of what the story is because we never got to season two. And we could talk about that downstream. But look, Paris, you know, here you're looking at a couple of different guys from around the country who are obviously powerhouses in their own right. But what's your story and where's your come from as it relates to your journey and where we are in pushing forward the Clean New Deal? You're on mute. Hi, sorry about that. Um, hi, Patrick. Hello, everyone. Great comments, great uh, stories on how everybody comes uh, to this point. I am a forensic paralegal. I have been a paralegal for 30 years, have a degree, also have a degree in criminal justice with high concentrations in criminology. So now I go more about the criminology part of, of all of this. So I dig in to figure out how all this happens. Our country what makes our society, what, what causes our society to work in a, in a great way is law and order. If you don't have law and order, you get corruption. And that's where I come in. Um, our courts have been bought in several different 
areas, be it the housing market, the drug market. Um, we have a lot of problems with, uh, you know, foster care and and uh, just just different areas, um, guardianship with the old people. Everything is money making now, and that's so law and order has gone out the window, and without it, we go nowhere. So that's what I do. I go in and tell people where the corruption happens, how they're doing it. And in the housing market, it is documentation fraud. Everything that Leticia James is charging or, or prosecuting Trump for, documentation fraud uh, and, you know, inflating his property values, everything, everything Trump has done is exactly what the system has been doing to millions of Americans since about 19, it started from my research from 1998 is about when it started and then morphed into what happened in 2008. And because no one was held accountable, because we don't have anyone holding true to the law um, in the courts or, or elsewhere, they continue to move on and they have steamrolled all of us. Um, another part of my background is I'm a survivor of domestic violence. I have the unique, um, I'm in a unique situation because when I'm in there as a victim of domestic violence, I'm also in there as a paralegal trying to determine where the system is breaking and why there, why that crime continues to happen. I also, uh, Dan, I was involved personally, not me personally, but I have personal uh, friends that were caught up in the whole um, uh, opioid crisis. And from my point now as a criminologist and, and a legal person, I see the system setting up us as lab rats, really. They knew they were creating um, you know, synthetic heroin. And what are the two things your body is continue that your body is physically addicted to is alcohol and, and uh, heroin. You can't physically get off those without almost killing yourself. And what are the two biggest things that the, the government allows to happen? Alcohol. I mean, alcohol sales are ridiculous and the opioid crisis. So what happens on, on the back end, just to kind of come in with Dan, the opioid crisis, the medical field, they get these guys are passing this this heroin out to these guys, and then all of a sudden they yank the chain, and now you've got millions of people that have survived the opioid now hooked on synthetic heroin. So where do they go? They hit the street. What is that fuel? That fuels the courts, law enforcement. Now everybody's getting money because you've got all these heroin you know addicts on the street stealing to get their their heroin, and then what does the government do? They they put up these uh. Um, crap, I can't think of it now. The, uh, where they go and they get the, the dose every day. I can't think of it. I'm sorry. It just ran out of my mind. $15 a day for these addicts to stand in line every fucking day. Christmas, Thanksgiving, birthdays, they don't care. Five o'clock in the morning, they're there to get this. And, and I'm sorry that it's... Is that like methadone or something like that? The, the methadone clinics are, are encouraged by the, the government. And who do you, I mean, seriously, and I, and I knew somebody in there, so I would go in there and just watch and they don't help you get off it. You keep getting it because you build up a tolerance. I literally sat in my car and watched these people pay $15 and they got to go steal to pawn the money to get into this. They'll, it's liquid methadone. They'll put it in their mouth. They'll walk out and spit it into another person's mouth for 20 bucks. I've watched it happen. That you just it's it's a whole and the government allowed that to happen. So this is my come from when I come to this group, I'm coming from the people. I'm telling you the stories of what I see, what I've experienced, not only in the housing, but in the drug industry. It's just uh, I've I've had to, to deal with um, the child welfare in this country. I've had to deal with. Um, you know, I, I've worked in sometimes I worked in the uh, not probate, but the. Um, guardianship and, and saw the corruption. So the only way co corruption can breathe is without law. And that's when the con came, when Patrick found me and I had already been working on this. I created a, a, a report called the fact report. And I re and what I do is dig in and drill down to where the problem is. Because if I'm going, if I'm getting information for an attorney, for my, my attorney, I have to make sure I answer all the questions before they're asked. 
So he doesn't go in, he or she doesn't go in and get blindsided by the other side. So I drill down. When I started doing that, I'm finding documentation fraud. I'm finding notary fraud. I'm finding businesses creating all this, this crazy things with the state, the secretaries of state, all these different names, variations of names, just so they can get around and do what they do. And mortgages that didn't even, you know, the company didn't exist, the, the lender didn't exist. And then everything else that you see in the con, I was seeing in the court, I'm like, how in the hell is this happening? How can, there's no, you can't have this many screw ups. And that's when Patrick came and I, and I saw, I'm, I'm in the con, but I also watched it and was gut punched. I was a diehard Democrat. And I feel like I have been, I have pulled myself out of a cult. I believed everything they said. I believe they're here to help me. I'm here, they're here to help society and they're, they're for the good of the people. Meanwhile, they're the ones that have been stabbing us in the back. Obama, who I loved and swore to God he was going to be the savior of everything. The evidence, you cannot deny evidence. I work in the courts. You cannot de deny evidence. That's what I work on. I don't work on theory or what's, you know, hearsay. I, I need to see hardcore evidence. Obama sold us out. He had a chance to fix it and he didn't. Biden's not in office by accident. He can be that he've already he already sold his soul to the to the you know the machine. Kamala Harris, he let she let Mnuchin go. Mnuchin, I have I could sit here for hours and tell you the stories of what these people have done to the American people. I have people dying. You were talking, Dan, about people dying. I have I have two clients commit suicide because they couldn't handle the abuse anymore. This is where my my angle of being a domestic violence uh, survivor. When you're gaslighted, you start to believe it. You don't believe your own common sense. You don't believe your own critical thinking. You just because it's every single day. So when you have abusers, which is what the oligarch, you know, everyone that's that's running this country, and it's not the president, by the way, but these big companies, you know, BlackRock and and J.P. Morgan, Jamie Dimon is evil personified in my book. When you have these people controlling the media, when they they're funding everything that you're hearing, you're reading or you're seeing on TV, you're being gaslighted, you're being led into this alternate universe or this alternate reality. That's not what's going on. Patrick just did a, tr a truth bomb, which I absolutely love, this, this last one he did yesterday. And you guys need to really watch it because he starts to connect the dots. What they're telling you in these presidential debates and, and, and where they come from and what they're for, but when you peel back the onion, as Dan says, and you start looking where they're getting their money, where they're investing their money, they're on the cake. They think they don't give a shit about you. They don't. You are a pawn in a massive money-making scheme. It is the largest mafia in history. And they have bought all three branches of our government along with the mainstream media to gaslight you to think that they're going to do something for you. That's kind of where I come from. That, that's a that's a great that's a great segue and i'm going to flip the script on our run of show here because i i want to get kevin back in the mix but before i do so i'm just going to make a quick comment to that end uh paris and thank you for that um look what paris just identified though is really what we're trying to get everybody out there the millions of you that have got to wrap your heads around this and we've got to elevate the truth above the madness and the ocean of lies and deception and misery and that is our destiny because the clean new deal has got to break the grip of tyranny because as we all are talking this is what we're, we're talking about a failed state are we talking about a failed state like in the congo or something like that not yet but maybe on our way and for some people yeah absolutely some of the people that you know uh roseanne excuse me paris identified and we see them all the time and i I, it's gut punching to me to see the misery in the streets and to think about what people do for opioids and whatever else they do. They because it has become the zombie apocalypse. And the other side of that are those that will just you know grab on to any sort of uh, you know look the you know any any sort of tyrant if you will to say look I'm the guy that can come fix this for you. And I know the irony of because I'm saying that I've got the truth that can overwhelm us. And I don't I don't want to be that guy, but I'm not that guy because we're going to build this dynamic movement moving forward with all of these different pieces of the uh, of the of the story but at the at the core of it all is what elevates the control the power which is what we have the answers to that reveals that this power has gotten literally free money which is socialism illegally by the system to control everybody else 
does that sound Orwellian? Does that sound like a movie? Does that sound like something? It, it is. And it's worse. And there's wars all over the world as a result of it. And will continue to be that way. Not to mention all of the things with our consumption of fossil fuel and how that fits in the mix. Fits in the mix. But I want to bring this back to Kevin because I thought that um, Paris hit really a huge point that we all have to discuss. You said at the beginning of your introduction of being involved with the Clean New Deal, Kevin, that we have to elect an independent president that's going to, you know, let's like like we saw in the progressive movements from Teddy Roosevelt to FDR with trust busting through the Clean New Deal in a country of by and for the people versus of by and for the corruption. What are we seeing right now in these presidential debates in all of the online sort of machinations and the projections of what you're seeing, Kevin, and how do you interpret what they're talking about versus what it is that we know and what we have to somehow turn the tables on this system that is dictating to us what the agenda is of the 2024 election, which obviously could be the lesser of two evils choice. How do you put all of that together in your, in your, uh, in your computer and filter it and, and, and turn it into what is going to be usable for a movement that of our magnitude? Great question, Patrick. We are watching the dismantling of our democracy right now. The You have two establishment parties. On the Democratic side, the DNC, the Democratic National Committee, has just canceled the Florida primary, right? And awarded all delegates President Biden, even though he, there are three registered Democrats who are challenging the president for the nomination. So let's put that in historical context. Imagine in 1980 when Ted Kennedy challenged President Carter, right? Okay, that they that the, that the party would actually cancel a primary and deny millions of voters the opportunity to decide, do we want to affirm the president? as the nominee again, or do we want to select someone else? This is the heart of our democracy. On the Republican side, it appears that the Republican electorate has coronate, is coronating Donald Trump, right? Because they have complete contempt for Republican establishment um, politicians. But here's the story with Trump. And, and he, he has told he has framed himself as a non-establishment um, person because he has criticized, he blamed George W. Bush for the worst foreign policy disaster in, in the war in Iraq. And he has challenged the Clintons and Obama, you know, eviscerating them for various claims from his point of view. In the eyes of the electorate, just particularly on the Republican side, right, that has earned him the position as being an outsider. Yet at the same time, in front of the whole nation, Donald Trump said and admitted honestly, right, that that when he went that when there was 20 Republicans standing on the stage with him when he ran in 2016, he told the American public that I own these people that when I call them, they return my calls, right? And so the problem with Donald Trump is yes, while he's framed himself as the establishment, uh, the non-establishment person, uh, candidate for president, right? He has, he has also revealed that he owns the same establishment politicians that the American electorate cannot stand. And that's on the Democratic side and the Republican side. So he's not the solution. He's, he is the ownership class that these politicians are working for that have betrayed the American public, that have been bought and sold, you know, that the con exposes, are in on it, that Obama is in on it, that W is in on it. Okay, so this is what's happening in our official election coming into 2024. We have two establishment parties totally beholden to the, to the, to the wealthy elite, right, framing framing an election that the, that the will of the American public will not be served. Okay, we, but we do have different than what, and Dan is absolutely right to point out in the experience of previous third party and independent candidates to the presidency, just how the establishment parties have made it nearly impossible. What happened to Ralph Nader? Absolutely, right. It, it, that's, that's important to note. 
But it's also important to note that never in US history has the American electorate reflected the level of contempt that they have for both the Republican Party and the Democratic Party. The idea that more people identify as an independent than identify as a Democrat or a Republican combined, right? That This is new, this is different, right? Okay, so the, this is why I'm saying the moment is here. The moment is here, the moment to escape the duopoly of the established parties who are wholly owned by the wealthy elites who have betrayed the American people, right? Okay, we have to seize this moment. and But we have a great example. We need to follow the example of what's happening in, a, in the American labor movement right now. Because this is from the grassroots up. This is not old school institutional unionism that's going on here. This is Americans who have seen past the divide and conquer nonsense that has served wealth for, the American, for our American history. They've seen past it, noticing that no matter whether you live in Alabama or you live in California and stuff like that, working people across this country are getting screwed and have been getting screwed for decades, okay? So, so what they have done is they have organized ever since, ever since COVID and we, we opened the economy, 2021, you have millions of Americans who have shifted, who have shifted and organized and, 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 and come together, but, you know, despite the fact that, that, that they have been polarized and that their labels and their identity have been weaponized, right? They have come together, right? And, 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 and they, have, they have found tremendous success. In my opinion, I think the moment is ready, is ripe. We just need the kind of person who comes from the people. And I believe that person, the person who has the ability to unite Americans in the deepest red states, in the bluest of blue states, is the United Auto Workers president, Sean Fain. Right. Sean Fain is the first democratically elected president of the United Auto Workers in their history. Sean Fain is a multi-generational member of the unionized working class who organized the most successful strike in UAW history in his first year in office. Donald Trump opposed the UAW's workers and Sean Fain's leadership of the stand-up strike by holding a nationally televised campaign event at a non-unionized manufacturing facility in Michigan in the middle of the strike. Yet Sean Fain kept his eye on the prize and he successfully held his ranks together despite having significant MAGA participation in the UAW membership. And he closed the deal, forcing the big three auto workers to the table. And he won record contracts, just like he promised to match the record profits of the big three automakers. Sean Fain has demonstrated he can handle the heat of Wall Street, which sponsored all types of vitriolic attacks, accusing him of being Trotsky, like he's a communist and stuff like that. And he success, successfully overcame the public opposition of Donald Trump. Sean Fain is a leader of the people, for the people, by the people. And I believe Sean Fain is the independent president we need to unite America behind the Clean New Deal. I, you know, I love the 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 pragmatic approach here, and you know, it definitely identifies what it is that we're looking for. And you know, my hope, my objective would be to get all of the information that we have collectively in front of Sean Fine. So, if many of you out there who happen to catch this have a connection, you know, maybe kick this to him to see, you know, what our discussion is revealing, and that's really just the beginning. Because we could have this conversation go for another five hours, and we'd still not even come close to the information that we actually have. But I do propose that we continue this conversation further than what I had run down, uh, excuse me, laid out for the run of show. If you're interested in participating further, I'd like to go a little while longer until we're ready to just um, close this up. So I'll leave it to you. If you want to send me a private message where you have to drop off and get to another uh, meeting, that's fine. But in the in the vacuum of that, I'm going to turn it over to to Roseanne to react to what Kevin said based on what we know and, and how do you interpret what Kevin is saying in, in context to what we're trying to achieve with the Clean New Deal? Kevin, I love your pragmatism, okay? I've run for office. It was what I wanted to do my entire life as a little kid. 
I wanted to be the mayor of Chicago. And at the same time, I understood I wasn't going to get anywhere. I wasn't going to be able to buy a house. I didn't even window shop because I wouldn't have the money to buy things because the Democrats in my neighborhood and in the city of Chicago ran the show. They didn't talk like Donald Trump. They didn't talk like MAGA Republicans. They didn't talk that way. They were slicker than that. Okay. And when I heard, okay, they, they knew the guts, the guts of the voters. And I will never forget in my entire life, a Republic, a democratic precinct captain, red faced, kind of big belly with a cigar in his mouth, telling several hundred regulars, loyalists. This is back in the 70s. He goes, you know what people care about? They care about garbage and dog shit. And he's absolutely right. And what I mean by that, and what I totally got right away, we are here talking on a level where I bet if we went out and asked about United Auto Workers strike, about Sean Fain, about strikes in general, about the strike that's going on here, that the uh, workers got three bucks an hour, which is okay. But if you're only making 10, three ain't much, okay? If we don't get our integrity and our courage in gear, locally, all the way up, okay? An independent president, which I thought Bernie might have been, an independent president is one thing, but we got to change what people see as normal. A clean New Deal is not normal to what people are looking at today. They're looking at confusion. They're looking at BS. They're looking at madness. They're looking at war profits. They're looking at the big boys doing whatever the hell they want because they can, because they are consistently rewarded and fueled. The reward is one thing, but the freaking fuel that they get because the freaking Federal Reserve pumped that money, pump that money, do whatever manipulation and accounting tricks you freaking need on the bank books, on the Fed books. Don't be hypnotized by all the other pieces that come together. They're all over the place. They're all over the place. We have to focus. I would have to say, sometimes I put on blinders, but I do that in service to the truth. When you know the truth, which is the truth ain't rocket science, friends and neighbors, it's fucking racketeering. And that's that's it. It's racketeering. It's simple. Do not let yourself be confused. Tell your friends and neighbors, show them that good 
can overcome the evil. The light can overcome the darkness. Don't let them continue to piss on your head and keep telling them it's freaking raining. Well, get the umbrella. Listen, we got the answers. They're free. Just do it, do it, do it. That's it. You know what? I, 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 this is why. Patrick, can I jump in for a second? I'm sorry. I know I'm breaking decorum. Yeah. It's so, I mean, Roseanne, absolutely, absolutely. It's just, we cannot lose the point that, that notwithstanding the fact that, as, as, as Paris has pointed out, all branches of our government are owned by the wealthy elite who have committed this fraud. We have to have a basis by bringing the cause of action to hold power to account. Now, if you could get 535 members of Congress, okay, that's one thing. But all you need is the president who has the power to appoint an independent council, right? Who has the power, he's the only, the, he or she is the only nationally elected politician in the country. If we get, if we get 90 million Americans voting for an independent president, all those Democrats and all those Republicans in office understand the gig is up, right? And that's what's that's that's a mandate. This is how changes. But we have to have some foothold in the power structure. Or well, right now, I think we have many examples of the 300 million Americans, you know, identifying the fact that something is is wrong. Something is terribly wrong with America, and yet they have no basis. This is this is what um, this is what um, Paris is talking about. They're in the courts. They're trying to bring their claims. They're protesting in the streets. They've done a lot of things, and they can't get a foothold. We need some foothold in power, and we can get it with the presidency. This is the moment. I, look, look, Kevin, absolutely, but. That's a good time for me to reiterate what, what it is. And I was going to save this for my conclusion, but I'm just going to do this as a segue to Dan, because I want to hear more from Dan in, in Paris. And then, you know, we'll see what happens after that. But I do have to insert this again, people. And I, I, I don't know how I got to do this, but somehow, some way, and you're all on this, but, but we're all thinking about all these different things, but I have the answers. I have the answers that we spent millions upon millions of dollars to get the trillion upon trillions of dollars of the truth and the entirety of the system that is giving us what we're all talking about in sort of inferences. These are the absolute architecture and the software analytics and the engineering that created what it is that we're all talking about. So we're all talking about the same thing but we know the audience is busy. We know the audience is trying to survive. We know the audience is getting everything thrown at them at the same time. And hell yeah, we got to get somebody uh, like a Sean Fine. If only Sean Fine, because we know he has his own agenda, because he has to because of his position. But if Sean Fine sees the forest for the trees of what we are providing to him in the con and the new untouchables and everything else, even though it's not the absolute direct correlation although it is because i just had another conversation with another magnificent whistleblower because i can assure you that the uh entirety of our um uh auto manufacturing was the other side of what happened in 2008 particularly with gm and it was particularly with gm lending by the way which was their cash cow which was far uh, uh in advance of of their revenue uh, their global revenue than what was going on with, um, you know, auto manufacturing, for example, just to put that into perspective. So Sean Fine and his incredible work, you know, I would add to that list, and this is just from a, a PR sort of scenario. I, I want to connect with Taylor Swift and, and teach her what's going on. She's got millions of people and she's a good human being. And if she understood that there are millions of Americans getting destroyed by this corruption, I wonder if she'd sing a song about it, honestly. And then say, I mean, it sounds kind of silly, but no, I'm serious. And then like, you know, uh, actors like Dwayne Johnson. But the thing is, The Rock, who's a very smart guy who knows systems and everything else. Th there are people that we have to get to tens of millions of people for those people to listen to us. 
And the only way I can see that happening is if somehow, some way through this consortium of all of us, the people are like, okay, A, it's the Clean New Deal. What are these guys talking about? And B, what does that lead them to? Oh, the con. Oh, now I understand the actual methodology of what then takes us on the journey, given what the AI depiction of what, what uh, Dan had created for us, that gets us to the Federal Reserve. Because we all know that money is the answer to everything. Well, where does money come from? Is it because a lot of great guys, you know, uh, you know, did something in the markets that were far in excess, better than everybody else, and so through competition and the natural flows of the free market, that they got, you know, a, a certain degree of of positioning and influence because they earned it? Yeah, that was America for a long time, but it hasn't been for about four decades. What we're dealing with in America right now is the wholesale sellout of everything that we think we are. And I do want to get into the in, into the, the conversations about our economic system and, and, and turn upside down and inside out what everybody thinks we are through certain words that just encapsulate what people's misunderstanding is. Everything, this is what I had to do with the con. I literally had to re-engineer my entire come from, everything that I learned in college, everything I learned in my life, you know, I kept scratching my head because I had a front row seat to power for a very long time. And when I saw how it operated, I'm like, what is this? And it wasn't until I did the work on the con and met Bill Black that I was able to understand in reverse engineer what reality is, which is the exposure that the entirety of free markets that we're a country of by and for the people that the law is supreme and that we hold people accountable and that we're the meritocracy and all of these other, quite frankly, fantasies over the course of the last, you know, several decades. No, we're a corporate fascist state that the, 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 the this, this betrayal is above the law and they own the law and they are the law. And that means it's tyranny. So anyway, I could go on and on and on, which I do every single day. But on that note, Dan, Dan, get, 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 tell us what, you know, because because what Kevin is saying is not wrong, but is there, is can we sell Sean Fine to save the world based on the, the stuff that we've done so far? Do you think that we can do that right away? Or do you think there's a there's there's more to it? Well, I'm hesitant to pin hopes on on um, you know a sole savior. Um, because I think that the I think that's the way Obama sort of sold himself as a, to 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 pick up where Paris left off uh regarding Obama. I had high hopes for him as well. Hope and change, and you know, that was his whole thing in twenty in two thousand eight. It didn't take long to figure out that uh, he knuckled under in terms of the um, his his sellout. I think when it comes to healthcare, the ACA. I think he sold out there. I think when it came to pursuing the 2008 financial crisis, all all the people that were behind that, he had Eric Holder, who did what? Nothing. He did nothing. They're oh, too big. To think. They were. By they doing were, that thing, he did everything. Go ahead. Yeah, yeah. But it, it, the whole, whole. Uh, I remember the phrase back then, it was too big to fail. And you read back and, and look at some of the things that were being said back then. It was like, well, we don't want to, we don't want to piss off these guys because they hold us, they hold us, um, got us by the short hairs, basically. And the reality, it, they weren't wrong. And the reality was that, you know, a lot of 401ks were invested, including yours truly. A lot of money, a lot of retirement funds were, were tied up in this whole thing. So what we so what Obama did through Eric Holder was to allow them to blackmail us, which is exactly what, and they continue to get away with it to this day, you know. And, and it brought me to this conclusion. I, I wrote this on on Twitter the other day, and I got a lot of likes for it. But I said basically, in my opinion, we're talking about different different political parties. There's very little daylight between the RNC and the DNC because they both sell legislation to the highest bidder. And the only difference now is that the RNC has lost their mind. They want to burn down the House. And the Democrats, at the very least, are at least willing to piss on it, which isn't going to be enough, right? It's not going to be enough to put out the fire. So we're heading for the rocks. And I think, you know, Sean Fine is, is absolutely a wonderful human being. And I think he's capable of it. But I hesitate to get in the same situation we were in 2016 when Trump said, I alone can fix it. It's not a one-man operation. Because what we're really trying to do, when you talk about Taylor Swift and Dwayne Johnson, what you're hinting at there, Patrick, is changing the culture. The culture has been hijacked, very craftily hijacked, by those in power. They got us talking about CRT, DEI, uh, cultural Marxism, 
uh, abortion, all these things are meant to distract us from the real problem here. And that's done on purpose because it robs us of our ability to focus on the real problem. Why do they do that? They're changing, they're, they're, they've got control of the culture. So to really change that culture, yeah, it takes a Taylor Swift's, it takes a Dwayne Johnson's, and, and it takes a lot more than that to begin to move this ship. Because you look at if you look at the United States as a big battleship, there is no steering wheel on this thing. It's going to take a lot of energy to get this thing to change its course. And the only way that's going to happen is if we can recruit a lot of people to help us, not only here with Clean New Deal, but all the peripheral uh, peripheral uh, organizations around it. There's like Wolfpack, there's Move to Amend and so on. They're all working on different aspects of fixing our system. Uh, Sean Fine, yeah, absolutely wonderful human being. Yeah, we could certainly have a conversation with him, but he alone is not going to be able to fix it. And he will be buried immediately, if not, if not, if not literally. Um, they will, they will, you know, if he's the only one standing in between the wealthy and their and and what they want, uh, one man is not going to last. Uh, you know, they'll either discredit him or do worse to him. That's what's going to happen. So we need to we need to build this thing from the ground up. I feel we need to change the culture. And in between now and the elections in 2024, we're going to begin to at least get a hold of some people like Taylor Swift and say, get people out there to start voting, get people aware of what's going on and start changing that culture. And I'm not going to I'm not going to push one presidential uh, person over another, but I do believe that Trump is going to take us down much more accelerated path to fascism. But that's not to say that Joe Biden is even capable of stopping it. I'm not even so sure the DNC really wants to stop it. It's quite obvious when you look at things like what they did in Florida by eliminating the the primary. They're not interested in democracy either. So, you know, we all have to assert ourselves and say, we are interested in democracy. We are interested in law and order. We have a country worth saving. Let's get busy. I want to, that, that absolutely perfect, Dan, and, and Sam, and, and, and everybody else. I mean, all of these things are so important. I want to um, uh, bring Paris into it, and I want to come back to, to Kevin in just a moment, but I, I want to say this is kind of an intermediary step, because you, look, guys, what I've experienced in my 430 truth bombs and making the con that took 13 years with a film I did before and the entire journey and this incredible odyssey to reconfigure my mindset to understand what reality is, you know, I'm a producer. So I always use analogies usually in the, in the, in the cinematic film, all filmography space. And one thing I want people to kind of figure is yeah, the matrix got it pretty damn close. The matrix revolutions, for example, at the very end, if you remember that film, um, and I apologize to those for you who don't know these references, but I'm using pop culture because millions of people have seen these films that in, whether or not they paid attention <laughs> to what the whole purpose of the story was is another story. But uh, Keanu Reeves' character, Neo, ends up having to go solo on this journey against the what they call the source at the end. And because the, the, the whole nature of the story was Mr. Smith was this virus that was going to take over the machine or the Borg. And the only thing that was powerful enough to stop that was a challenger that understood how it worked and then ultimately had to make the case to the source. <laughs> Which, how does that work in this whole situation? Well, the source is the system. The, the, the source is the power system. It's the it's what the, the founders of the country had designed, which is the separation of powers, presumably between Congress, which is supposed to represent the, the American people, which is the Supreme Court, which is supposed to operate separately, but obviously represents the most astute and the most brilliant in our legal profession to just be umpires on making sure the law does what the law was intended to do. And obviously, obviously there's some common sense that's involved. And that's why we have however many members, I, I know that we're trying to get to 13 members, but, uh, but it, it, then in the media is supposed to be the fourth estate that balances all of that to give us the truth, to understand what is going to influence the 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 citizenry to hold those that we move through the system to make laws on our behalf that are going to do so for the greater good i mean that's the design and at different times in our you know in our history we we got pretty close uh you know to to the way it was supposed to be designed but always after absolute 
unbelievable turmoil and devastation, whether it was the Civil War, whether it was World War II, and we still didn't get it exactly right, right? So it's always in order to form a more perfect union, and this thing never ends. But we have the evidence of how all of these systems have, A, turned in on themselves, betrayed us, who they're getting paid by, and why, and how it is all illegal. It's that simple. We have that information that we have to sell the American people above anything. And that goes for Sean Fine and that goes for Taylor and that goes for whomever. Cause I can imagine being in the business that I am that gatekeepers one day say something like this to me. They're like, Hey Patrick, we discovered your truth bombs because 20 million people are watching it and you're making a big noise, but we'd like to introduce you to Dwayne Johnson and he wants to meet you. But here are the terms that we want to have you talk to him about. And this is kind of what he's interested in. No, Mr. Johnson, you're not going to dictate to me what I know better than anybody in the goddamn world. And the bottom line is it's not because I'm arrogant. It's because I went on the journey and I did the work. Now, yeah, that's me. And this has to be in the context of everything else we're talking about. And so I got to turn this back over to you, Paris, given everything that you've seen and what you know in your in your district, for example, and the state of Florida and all the craziness that's going on there. What's your what's your outlook towards a what we know is fact and b what you're seeing in the political uh, process and turmoil and, and how do you interpret it and how do you project forward based on your your hope and objectives as it relates to creating really, quite frankly, a revolution? Go ahead. Okay, I'm going to be completely honest with you. I don't watch anything political anymore. It's for me, it's stupid. It, and I'm going to talk to I'm going to direct this to the people that are watching this because most everybody is the lesser of two evils. I'm not buying into that anymore. I don't want to hear it. I don't want to talk about it anymore. I do the work. I'm in here trying to tell everyone out there, you have to watch the con. I also use analogies. I've always used the Truman Show. In the Truman Show, to, to boil it down, every this this person is is born into this studio, this you know, studio reality, and goes about living his life. Everyone's paid to to interact with this this person. And his entire life is being controlled by people that are being paid to control it. One person that he believes in tries to tell him, you're living a lie. Hello, you're living a lie. Patrick is that guy. You're, he's telling you, we're all telling you. I'm telling you because I'm in the course. I see it every day. We're living a lie. Now, at the towards the end of the movie, what does he do? He starts to think. Now he's looking around going, what the fuck is going on? And he goes, wait a minute. And somehow, and I don't remember, it's been a while since I've seen the movie, but he decides he gets in the sailboat, this little, little sailboat, and he's going to putt to the horizon. And the horizon is actually a wall painted to look like a horizon. The con is that boat. You want the truth, get your ass behind the con top, it's the con.tv, sit in the sailboat and take the journey with us. And you're going to run into that wall. And when you look up, you're going to see that stairway to the door to walk the fuck out of the bullshit you've been living in. And I can't make it any clearer than that. I don't watch presidential stuff. I don't listen to the news anymore because I can't. Patrick's great at the fact that he can, he laughs. Because, and it's a, it's a funny laugh because he knows the truth. He knows everybody's bullshit. I can't get to that part. My right now talking to you, my heart is pounding because I have people in those courts right now. I had a lady, I've been working with this woman in New York since uh, 2008, 2019. She's battling the largest property theft ring with the full force of the government behind it to evict her. And the reason she stood up and, and I'm the one that did all, I did all the research. I can tell you right now that your government is the one kicking Americans out of their house. Why? Because the only tangible thing we have that can continue this corruption machine are our houses. It's the only thing all the people in the power can control. They can control the value. They can control how it's sold. They can control the mortgages you get. They control your credit rating. They control every fucking thing that you do. And to kick you out, they, they got everything they could from you. It's identity theft, it's credit theft, it's your sanity, it's your health. When they have completely wrung everything that's human out of you, they will toss you into the street. And trust me, they've been doing it since 2008. 
and you guys aren't paying attention. It's crimes against humanity. Once they toss you, it starts all over. They find the next victim, the next person who has that American dream. I'm going to get a home. I'm going to live in it. I'm going to do my life. Meanwhile, they have destroyed millions and millions of people. So I'm asking you very nicely. You can't fix anything. You don't understand the root of the problem. That's what I do in the, in the, in the legal field. We have to get to the root of the problem. Bring the evidence. I'm telling you the con is the evidence that you need to go find this presidential person to run. It's not a Democrat. It's never going to be a Republican or a Democrat that's going to help you. I promise you that. They are both working to control the Iron Bank, which is the Fed. The Fed's the one feeding all the bullshit. They're the ones that continue to give the money to these fuckers who are going out buying and selling all of our homes. Do you, any of you other people know, do you see where you see a lot of, uh, why, oh, I could just go on forever. I'm, I'm going to try to stay on point. You have to understand the reality and you have to understand you have been systematically gaslighted for decades by all of the powers that be. Everything that you see on the news, all the division, the, the race riots, the abortion, now it's the transgenders. They just keep picking something to get to your emotion because emotion is what makes abusers thrive. And I know this because I was a victim of gaslighting. I what my husband, my ex-husband now, gaslighted me to a fucking point that I couldn't even believe my own reality. And I didn't believe who I was. I didn't believe what was going on. And what they do is they separate you from your family, your friends, those people that are in your ear telling you stuff. I'm telling you, stop listening to MAGA. Stop listening to the Democrats. Listen to what Patrick's telling you. Listen to everybody that's in the con. I mean, you've got people, whistleblowers who have put their life on the line, their lives, their careers, their families. We're talking from the DOJ, from the FBI, the SEC, everybody from the court system, like myself, you know, I'm in the con. There's, oh my God, there's so many people that have, that with such integrity that have told you they're lying to you. They set you up. Listen to us. We're not. And they, and they say, oh, you're conspiracy theorists. My work has been called conspiracy in court often. And the way they've gaslighted you to think conspiracy is negative. Oh, the minute you hear conspiracy, you go, oh, conspiracy theorists, they're tinfoil hats and this and that. I, yes. Yeah, can, I I chop, it. can I chop in real, real quick? Because I want to toss this over to, to Kevin, but I got to do this with this with this. First of all, thank you, because you're absolutely right about all of that. And I was just so inspired and profoundly uh you know, uh, appreciative of, of, of everything you just brought in that beautiful uh, sort of appeal to the people out there. The, the people have got to understand that, yeah, I went on a Truman show. Okay. I was in the Truman show. And the way I formulated my question at the very beginning was I'm not expendable. Chances are you're not either. And my partner who gave me the, the miracle opportunity to go on this insane journey to put it all together. And we went far beyond what we ever could have imagined. But he pointed to me in the right direction. He said, if you can go to figure out how we went up by and for the people to up by and for the corrupt corporation, then I'm in. And we went way beyond anything he could ever possibly imagine in me. And, and what he pointed out to me you know, now many, many years ago, and I see this now in the presidential election and what we've all talked about, is that the presidential election is just another – circus act that once every you know several years that is getting us to get into these identity politics issues and all of these other things that are extremely important they are but they're not the core of what's created this system that we've all identified where the billionaires have complete control which is the the antithesis of democracy is the antithesis of a system of democracy that has integrity of the law no it's just what we've had throughout history that's it whether it's the monarchs whether it's you know uh some form of dictatorships or whatever else it's the natural inclinations of power or to rule absolutely and absolute power corrupts absolutely and when you understand and this is what it gets at the very end of this whole thing that this is the whole purpose of this journey this is the source this is everything this is where you have to see the forest for the trees and you have to understand this is you know, the emperor's new clothes. And I always like to say on really bad acid, as you might think I had a bad acid trip one time. So I know what that feels like. But the bottom line is that, you know, when you understand what money is and how it operates and how we manipulate it and who is the guys in control of it, 
only then can you fully understand what we're up against. And so I got to turn it back to you, Kevin, man, because look, there's a lot more going on in the world right now that's got a lot of people's attention, yourself included. Do you want to manifest like what you think the hook is for you, given everything and, and what is like the most important thing for you right now for the entire uh, the population of the United States to go, hmm, OK, I, I, I'm going to use that as my entry point to what these guys are trying to do. Or is it or is that just not important? I'm not sure. Yeah, that entry point, Patrick, is taking a sober look at the American public. You know, we've been working together, those of us on this call and, and Roseanne, you know, now for some weeks. And it's been, uh, you know, like the choir coming together because of the work you've done, Patrick. I am fi I finally found a moment where I must differ fundamentally with some of the folks on the call, right? The culture in this country has changed. What American people are we talking about if we think that there's any major part of this population who still believes in the idyllic American dream, who still believes in the narrative that the powers that be have painted. The, you can, every expression of the American public screams the fact that they all understand that something is fucked up. Excuse the language. They get it. We, the biggest, one of the biggest mistakes we make is looking at who, at MAGA and, 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 and not understanding why they support Trump. What, you know, yes, there are some sliver who are misogynist. Yes, there are some sliver who may be racist. Yes, there's some sliver who may be white supremacist and all that. But when 70 plus million Americans, most of which were supporting Bernie Sanders, right, start supporting Trump, is because they're living, they're living, uh, the, what's her name, um, Janet ja Janet Janice. Janet Joplin, Joplin's Joplin. famous line, you know, right? With freedom is is just another word for something, for nothing left to lose. I'm telling you, they want the system to burn down because it doesn't serve them, and they know it doesn't serve them. And the reason why is we give them no alternative. We give we give them no alternative. I'm not asking for us to make a hero out of Sean Fain. Quite frankly, Dan, that insulted me. Yeah, my proudest day in my political life as an American was when Barack Obama got elected and he betrayed me and his own electorate in the same way that the faithful got betrayed by Catholic priests, right? Like, this is not what I'm trying to recreate with Sean Fain. Sean Fain was just elected within a year ago. He's not five years. He's not establishment UAW. He's rank and file working class who happens to be brilliant. Right. We don't need a hero. We need someone who reflects the pain that 300 million Americans are going through, who, who will get it and he will get it. But he can't do anything by himself. None of us can. None of us can. They're going to shred all of us. We are talking about challenging power, entrenched, global, trillion dollar power. So if we're not prepared to do like Dr. King and on the day before his death, talk about, yeah, I can see where we're heading. I may not make it there, but, but we're going to get there. We all have to take that approach. And Sean Fain has to take that approach. And he knew in doing what he did that he was taking that approach when he was challenging power. So that's all I'm saying. The culture has changed. If we're coming at people from the perspective that they're still, that they're still under the impression that, that, that everything that comes out of Trump's mouth he's going to do and that's why they support him then we're not then, then we don't see the people we're talking to they understand that everything is fucked up the problem is they don't have time the economics over the last 30 years have squeezed people to the point where they don't have time to, to they have so much bandwidth because they're trying to keep the lights on i want everyone listening to this call to this podcast to go check out the com to dig in Right. But if you don't have the capacity to do so because you're worried about how you're going to keep your lights on, join us nonetheless. The information is there when you can get there. The point is, is that the culture has changed, but it's imperative that we give them a choice because the choice is going to be made. And let me just put a bow on this last comment that I'll make here for today's call. 
we are running out of time in many events. The climate crisis will smother everything, right? We got to 2030 to reduce greenhouse gas emissions in the United States by 40%, right? We can't wait to 2028. This is it. We elect Biden, we elect Trump, right? We elect someone who's beholden to the, the power elites who put us in the catastrophic position that we're in. And this is game over. We face existential threats, not only in our economics, but in the ecology that sustains human life. So this is our moment. And, and, and I call to my colleagues here on this call, look to the American public again. They are not gaslit anymore. They simply don't know the con. They don't have the answers, but they know something is seriously fucked up. Thank you. That, that was that was absolutely powerful. Uh, thank you for that, Kevin, and, and everything that you've done. I want to give, before I provide my offer my closing thoughts because I've uh, been the guy directing this conversation today on our rotation where each one of us gets a shot to do this. Uh, but I want to turn it to Dan before I do so. Dan, do you have uh, any comments based on what Kevin just mentioned? Yeah, I do. Um, thank you, Kevin. That was uh, very good. And I, I did not mean to, uh, to disparage anything that you said before. Uh, my observation was that um, we do need people like Sean Fain. We need a lot of people like him. Uh, he's an absolutely shining example of what can be done when when the chips are down and someone that actually stands up for the rights of the people. We need more of him. Uh, and, and I did not mean to imply that, you know that he alone can fix it. I, I agree. I mean it's 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 a multiple it's it's a multiple thing. Um, but I do have uh, I did have one observation, which was. The military these days is having trouble recruiting people. And I don't know exactly why that is, uh, but I suspect what you say, Kevin, is true, that people are beginning to see through this. They're beginning to see through, why should I be fighting? Why should I be fighting for something that I don't believe in? Why should I be fighting for this system that's, as, as Paris says, is pushing people onto the streets? Why do I fight for it? And I kind of tripped into this recently. I, I told you before, Patrick, I'm, I'm sort of writing my own novel here. And there's this one paragraph I wrote, which kind of crystallizes this whole thought. And if I could just read it just very quickly here, it's a very short paragraph. I would just title it something like a soldier's song. And I have to say, first of all, I was never in the military. Uh, I did try out for it, but I had a, a bad shoulder at the time. I wanted to become a pilot, but that didn't work out. But um, this this is basically about a person who's who's down who's feeling really down and, and this is go with this this is as far as george was concerned his his years as a marine corps soldier were all for naught he was forced to witness firsthand the futility of fighting for a nation that wasn't the least bit concerned with the true tenets of freedom or humanity but was only concerned with money and imperialism george had sacrificed his only child on the altar of that ideology and then he had to watch his wife wither away lost in grief unable to recover until a bottle of pills finally ended her pain. And I almost cried when I wrote that because to me, it crystallizes what's really going on in this country these days. And this is just a, you know, a, 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 fictitious, a fictitious soldier's perspective on things. But I think everybody has a song like that that they can sing. That we've, we've become, we've gotten to a point now where we realize the futility of everything. And that's why people want to burn it down. And I'm standing, I, I'm still standing on board saying, let's not burn it down. Although I understand why we want to burn it down, but let's not burn it down because there are people like Sean Fain and there are people who can bring us back to our true tenets of freedom and humanity. It's going to take some work though. Thanks. Paris. I just wanted to, to finish by saying that part of the abuse that makes it to where we don't pay attention is to keep us downtrodden, to keep us fighting. And while you don't think gaslighting is what some, what millions are, are witnessed or you know that are experiencing, they're still experience a form of abuse. Financial abuse is, you know, obviously the number one. But if you, I want people to understand, we've already lost our rights. I, again, am in the court system and I have, it's now across the board, if you speak truth in the court, 
the powers that be, the opposing counsel, the ones that are being paid for by the government, which I approve of, are getting court orders to shut you up or you can't file anything in court in your defense. You can't say the truth. And if you do, they will do everything they can to destroy you. I can't, I mean, you would have to follow one of my journeys with me for you to understand how powerful that statement is. Our court system is supposed to be where we go and and everybody brings their, their truth to the center and then you know, justice prevails. That's not happening. We've lost our courts. They're gone. And they have been for quite a while. So democracy is going to be right behind it quickly. And by keeping the American people working very hard to try to keep the lights on is still a form of abuse. The only way systems work like this, where you have the handful of few powerful against millions, is by abuse. And the only way you can figure out that you're being abused is to open your eyes and figure out what the truth is. And that's what the con does. It helps you understand the truth. Go listen to Patrick's truth bombs. He, he's making all the, the connections. And yes, we do need to come together. Unfortunately, in the grand scheme of the American public, it's a handful of people that are in tune and understand that there's something wrong. Well, you can't change things just feeling like something's wrong. You have to find out what is wrong. And for the first time in history, we don't have to wait until it burns to the ground. We can stop it right now. All you have to do is get on board, watch the show, watch. The, I mean, it's going to be the best five hours you've ever had. Just watch it. And then follow all the other stuff, the new untouchables, the live, the, the uh, Patrick said is in his uh, last truth bomb about the filibuster that we did. I was in DC with some of the, the people and was on that with him, with all the other experts. And it lays it all out in ways. I'm not, I'm not on the same level with these gentlemen. I don't have all the, the degrees and, and experiences and world travel. I'm just a paralegal a grandma. I'm hanging out, doing my best. I'm a victim. I've been fighting for my house back and forth since 2009. I'm telling you, the way they lay it out, anybody can understand it. You can understand how the Fed works. You can understand how the government works. You can understand how Wall Street and the banks work. You just have to have enough courage and integrity, as Rose said, to go, you know what? I'm going to stop for five minutes. I'm not going to go binge watch something stupid on Netflix. I'm not going to sit here and watch something stupid like Bachelor Paradise or whatever. I'm going to sit down and I'm going to take my life, my family, my American, you know, patriotic duty to sit down for five hours, one hour a day and watch it. I'm in the one on the DC. That's 10 hours. It took me a week to watch it and I'm in the damn thing. And I still, to this day, go back and I keep taking notes because I'm in it and it, it matters to me. That's the problem, um, Kevin. People know things are wrong, but does it matter enough for them to take the time? Does it matter for you not to listen to the presidential bullshit and the campaigns and all the same promises we hear all the same time? Oh, like we're so tired of it. I don't want to hear it. I'm telling you from a person who's down on the bottom in the trenches with everybody else, I'm taking the time to learn. I didn't know about the Fed. I didn't know a lot about what Patrick was showing me. I didn't know how the Fed worked. I didn't know how our financial system worked. But I have taken the time every day to learn because it matters to me. I have kids. I have grandkids. I could be on a street and just like that. And I know it. So it has to matter to you. Don't sit there and wave the flag, everyone. I'm a good American. If we don't take the time to learn the truth, everything you hear, politicians and everything else, news media, it's hearsay. When, when I'm talking facts, it's hearsay. You're hearing opinion. You're hearing what somebody else's regurgitation of what they, they read. Or Take the time, go read it. Take the time to go on a governmental thing and read a law. Figure it out. It's not that hard. It really isn't. You just have to take the time. So. Being American, does having a system that works right matter to you? That's what the Clean New Deal is. The Clean New Deal 
is bringing back integrity to a system that is broke. It's not even broke, it's shattered. We've allowed these people to, to let it shatter our system because we stopped caring. We stopped caring like in the 80s. People were making money, going and doing their thing. And then the 90s are like, oh shit, things are starting to tighten up. What are we going to do? And now they're scrambling. And then it just stopped mattering. You didn't, you didn't care. You would be a party line voter. You would go in, okay, I'm a Democrat. Bing, 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 bing. You didn't even look into who these people are. I was one of those. I'm a Democrat. I'm going to go in, bing, bing, bing. I did it. I'm guilty. I don't anymore. I physically got ill the last presidential um, election. I could not physically, with my heart, go in and punch for Biden. I didn't for Trump either, but I couldn't do it because I knew who he was. I knew he was vice president during a time that we got sold out. I know what he did. I couldn't vote for Camilla Harris either. I know what she did. Her one action fucked millions of homeowners. Because why? She wanted to sell her her, her uh, patriotic duty to, to the machine so she could get in and be the first black vice president, first black female black vice president. Well, whoopee for you. Do you know how many heads you stepped on to get there? Do you know how many lives you destroyed to get there? You let Mnuchin walk. You let a criminal have no accountability for what he did. I'm still working with people today. I have an 81-year-old disabled black woman today who is in tears because she got she lost her home and she didn't do anything. It was IndyMac. It was Steve Mnuchin. It was One West. It was Camilla Harris not doing her job to get these people down. It has to matter. We have to matter to each other. We are all we have. It's the humanity of this country that I love so much. It's the humanity that I fight for with my clients every day. You have to matter. It's not about the millions of money. It's not about the billionaires. It's about us standing up for us on a national level. Put aside who you vote for, what color you are, what religion you are, we are human beings, and there's millions of us out here suffering because you guys out there don't, you know something's wrong, but you don't take the time, and you have no excuse. Patrick did all the work. He put it all together. There's absolutely zero excuse for not knowing exactly what you're living in right now. I'm sorry. That's all I had. I'm, I wanted to be brief, but I'm. That was that was every everybody's points today. Again, this is I feel like a magical connection, and I'm so proud of you, Paris, for all that you've done, and I appreciate what, all that you've learned and you've committed to. Because, look, I mean, I got I, I we've talked forever. I'm gonna I'm gonna try to bring this short, and I'm the guy that talks forever. So I. I I really appreciate you guys and, and and I hope everybody got their points across and there's still so much more. Um, everything, in fact, everything that you guys talked about, I, I could have talked you know, for an hour based on every point that you guys brought up. And I want to thank uh, anybody who's made it all the way through this. I pray that millions of you do. I, I uh, you know, I'm, I'm looking over here at Twitter and I see, wow, I got a big smile on my face, Courtney. Thank you for tuning in the entire time. Uh, typically, our experience with these with these Twitter X's is that, um, or these uh, spaces is that we record them, we put them out there, and then they get several thousand views downstream. So that's the purpose. I don't think a lot of people tuned into this today, but Courtney, who has contributed thirteen dollars, and who I see on X, and she makes incredible points all the time, and she's been here. So thank you, thank you, thank you, uh, and hope you will spread the word. But I, I I'm going to try to summarize it from from my perspective uh, of my journey um <clears throat> and i'm going to try to do it in five minutes so um listen guys uh the american dream mattered to me above all else and i was always i grew up in this kind of punk rock sort of you know time period so i was always jaded and cynical but i always kind of was like the pseudo yuppie guy in the midst of like i didn't trust power but at the same time i was going to work within it and i was going to be smart because i'm dynamic and charismatic and you know and i'm a sports athlete and i'm a gamer and i'm a player and i know how to make shit happen and i'm a brawler too by the way and that's been me my whole life so when they pulled the rug out from underneath me and the roof collapsed on my head and they didn't kill me and they almost killed me. Trust me, I almost killed myself as a result from this, this insanity that took place. But when they didn't do it and they didn't destroy me, they made a giant mistake. Because I don't quit. 
Sí. I know it's worth fighting for. And I come from the land of NASA. <laughs> and NASA knows how to create great fucking things. And NASA at one point was, of course, a government institution. And oh, yeah, I know who ran NASA and I knew who the top rocket engineers were and where they came from and everything that happened in that era to create NASA. But in the end, NASA is a lot of brilliant people that work together to do fantastic things. That's the America that I know, that I know that we're capable of. And there's so many of us out there because I've experienced this on my journey. And this this is the thing that ultimately saved my life and, and redeemed me was because <clears throat> when I had the rug uh, pulled out from underneath me and I you know, took a nosedive, when I got on the road and I started to do discovery and I started to find out that there were people who had answers and then I realized what they had to go through to br bring us those answers, the sacrifice and the hero heroism and the character of these people were extraordinary. And they gave me a reason to carry on, even though I lost everything in the process, but I'm still breathing. And I, you know, I'm fortunately, I got a lot of things in my world that, you know, have enabled me to move forward, but, um, but it's our country people. And there were a lot of sacrifice. There was a lot of debt. There was a lot of, you know, everything that probably none of us can really truly comprehend, especially in this day and age where everything is like, what's on my fucking TikTok feed? Or what's on my X feed? And what, what are the liars telling me today? And oh, I'm going to go listen to these guys that if you just did five minutes of research and you understood who Tucker Carlson is, you'd understand the guy's a fucking liar. Everything that comes out of his mouth is a lie. And yet he's got millions of people that listen to him and he's a vector to other liars and more liars. And there's liars in every direction. From mainstream, we just saw, for example, you know, uh, Fox, Rupert Murdoch, the king daddy of liars you know, pay $787 million to Dominion because they proved that you know, they didn't want to go to trial because their business model is a lie, as is all of media. So what we're trying to tell you, and we have been telling you for close to two hours now, that it's the emperor's new clothes on really bad fucking acid. And we've got the answers. And it's going to take millions of us to come on board and to lock arms together like the civil rights movement and all of the previous movements of the past that, yeah, broke the bondage of slavery only to not finish the job and allow Jim Crow to breathe, okay? Y you know, guys, one way or this, this is going to end one way or the other. And it's 2023. We've known most of this stuff for 30 to 40 years, people. This is not new. It's just gotten worse and they've moved the goalposts further and the corruption's gotten worse and the, the power is more cynical and the law has been completely co-opted. Just look at the Supreme Court. In the last year, we have seen that Judge Clarence Thomas, the ultimate expression of Martin Luther King's dream, become a vestige of the American nightmare. And he's not the only one. Same with, of course, the powerful sentiment by my colleague, Kevin Howard, about Barack Obama. And thank you, Kevin, for saying that. Because Barack Obama betrayed all of us because of hyperbole. And to my fellow friends out there, and we all, uh, most of us were fans of Bernie Sanders. Bernie Sanders didn't have the gumption to go all the way. He told us Wall Street's business model is fraud. And he learned that from the team that gave me all the answers. And I was in the midst of that in the Brooklyn debate in 2016, not to mention other elements of it, which are amazing that they stay silent on the fraud. Guys, we're on the Titanic. It's been sinking for a long time. The only answers that we have in front of us right now are corporate fascism by a corrupt neoliberal system uh, that's had control for 40 to 50 years that created this nonsense, this insanity that the entire system is in on, or fascism complete outright criminal fascism in the form of Mussolini because Trump's not Hitler guys. He's not, he's not, he, he, he's about himself. Hitler was for the cause. 
Hitler was for the cause and he was all in and it was he was going to take down the world and 70 million people died in World War II, which by today's numbers, we'd be up to like 365 million if you did the percentages. OK, are we on the verge of World War Three? Yeah, one way or the other, because of what Kevin said about climate side. And so what I put together with the con and everything that I bring to you in my truth bombs and everything that we're trying to get over this this multi trillion dollar business model of lying is that I've got literally now the 70 trillion dollar truth i know i sound like dr evil when i say that 70 trillion dollar truth right i'm not fucking around we have the evidence of 33 trillion dollars being used illegally in 2009 because of all of the ramifications and everything i show you in the con of the federal reserve that kicked over through sullivan and cromwell the law firm that created the cia go figure on behalf of the consortium the too big to fail banks $33 trillion in 2009. That saved the system of the criminals through socialism for global racketeering. That's what it is. And then ultimately, they've done that nonstop all the way through COVID. Now, a lot of people got $1,600 checks. Do you know that when we got $1,600 checks, whatever that's going to buy you, <laughs> which cracks me up, that people were like, oh my God, we gave everybody a free lunch. Do you know what the percentage, the upside was for the top 1%? Let me ask the question to my group right here. Everybody shake your heads or, or, or raise your hand if you can tell me what the 1% received in uh, stimulus from the government through the quantitative easing that wound up literally in the checks of the 1% or the bank accounts of the 1% during COVID. Anybody raise your hand if you know what that number was. Okay, Kevin can't because unfortunately he doesn't have it. And he might know. But I can tell you, it was approximately a million dollars of free money to the top 1%. That's not the 001%. We all know that we saw Elon Musk's numbers double. You know, uh, all the billionaires doubled their money during COVID. Oh, is that through supply chains? Because Jeff Bezos had Amazon and an iron grip on, you know, on monopolies. And then everybody took their stimulus and, you know, did it in the meme stocks. And, you know, they did. By the way, I, one thing, I, I love Chris Hedges on 90% of what he's all about. There's some stuff that I'm not completely on board and nobody's perfect. I certainly am not either, right? We're all flawed to one degree or another. But when Chris Hedges talks about the collapse of the American middle class or the the, the manufacturing class, you know, the the laborers, the the the, the really the 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 the, the blue collar, the 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 nuts and bolts of the country, they go to gambling, they go to pornography. They go to opioids. That's failed state. And what did we see during COVID? Well, we saw a whole lot of PPP fraud. And you know you who you are out there. Billions and billions of dollars of PPP fraud, which again is, you know, uh, corruption to criminals, right? But while everybody got their sixteen hundred dollar checks and the you know the the one percent got a million dollars in their bank accounts, you know the rest of people were throwing their money into crypto because why? It's gambling. <laughs> Fucking gambling. And what did we see with everything that just happened with Sam Bankman Freed? Oh, yeah, well, it was just a fraud. Donald Trump is a fraud, five decades of a fraud. And 70 million people want to vote for that guy as a replacement to the fraud that created Donald Trump. Look, we've got the answers. Is there a better way to spend $70 trillion right now than never ending war, than uh, pollution? Then propping up Saudi Arabia that got away with 9-11. And that's a whole nother bag of uh, goods, not to mention all the lies and the deceit and the deception that we're seeing from, you know, the make believe, uh, you know, presidential uh, debates that are what you're going to present us an answer. Nobody's going to present the answer. Nobody. Unless we get them, this group of us and the people that we're committed to and the people that are listening to us and the tens of millions of you that I hope come on board, join us. Give us your time, your energy, if you can't give $13. But if you can give $13, and the number is important because it was the original 13 colonies that gave us the chance of in order to form a more perfect union based on separation of powers. If you can give us 13 bucks and then bring in 13 people and we can grow this to where we get $169 million, do you think they'll pay attention to us? Can I go and I ask a billionaire for money to go make this happen? No, they don't want anybody to know. How do I know where I think you came from? It needs to be you 
that puts in the money to put uh, to get us all to elevate these truths to be able to get a country of foreign people back from the corruption. Otherwise, it's all over. It has to matter to us. It has to matter. It has to matter. And they know that it doesn't matter to most. I mean, not enough for people to put forth the effort. We're asking $13. That's a large coffee at Starbucks. That's it. If that's all you can do, give the $13 and share. Because there's a whole bunch of us that it does matter to. And we work very hard every day. And we have for, I've done this for almost a decade working in the courts. Just give $13. We'll do the work. That's all we're asking. Because we can't go out and give this to other people without some sort of finance people. And, and, the thir- and the thirteen dollars is just to build the movement because we got to take the truth to the people, and it's going to be this, it's going to be this Lollapalooza like you know barnstorming tour. But we're going to build you know the website and everything else, and hopefully, hopefully a, a new, a, new uh, a party, and we have somebody like Sean Fain come on board and go. You're what I've been looking for, but you got to build it. Nobody's yes. coming to the rescue. Nobody is going to rescue the American dream if we don't do it ourselves. And by the way. I'd say that Jefferson and in, 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 in for all the flaws of the founding fathers, I think they knew that. That's why they tried to put the power in the citizenry. And they tried to create all of these elements to give us the opportunity to have a country of by and for the people. And then they said, it, yeah, it's great if you can keep it. They they were cynical because they knew power. And that's what it's been throughout history. Game of Thrones, man. The cycle never ends. It's up to us. And yeah, in the United States, we have had moments where the good guys won. It's 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 just that time, and we've all talked about uh, probably as much as we can. I think we've exhausted everything today. I know I'm exhausted. That's two hours. Anybody want a final words before we shove off? One final word, Patrick. www.thecon.tv. I love you guys. I I'm it's so honored. I'm so honored to be walking with you, and uh, together we'll go to the light, um, and and hopefully pick up where. Dr. King left off um, and all the others that made him possible. So onwards and upwards, failure is not an option. Rise, war, revolt. It, when you've got the truth, you've got, when you've got the truth, you're bulletproof and it's not rocket science, it's racketeering. Thank you guys. We look forward to hearing from you. Please join us onwards and upwards. Thanks. Yes.